You know, I occasionally like to scroll through the NFL subreddit just to see what's going on. And when I saw the news that Mike Daniels had been dropped by the Packers, my jaw dropped. I mean, he's been a fan favorite for the Green Bay Packers and one of the more underrated defensive tackles in the league for quite some time now. And he didn't appear to be washed up either. I mean, he's only 30 and he was a Pro Bowler just two years ago. Granted, I realize Pro Bowl is not necessarily the best way to gauge talent, but still. I mean, he was a fan favorite who absolutely still can produce, but I guess Green Bay just figured, you know what, yes, he can still produce, but he's not worth the contract he's currently been given. But at the same time, just the timing of it all seems very bizarre. I mean, if you are going to cut him, why not cut him back when free agency is happening so you can maybe pick up a replacement for him? Or maybe not even a replacement, but just pick up someone who then can help your roster in the future. It's an interesting move, but then of course, in classic Green Bay Packers fashion, when a fan favorite does go to a different team, Team, he's gonna have to go to a division rival and so that's why Mike Daniels signed with the Detroit Lions and of course he signed with the Lions because now they have one of the most ridiculous defensive lines in the league. I mean, those guys shouldn't be playing football. Those guys should be, like, guarding the President of the United States or something, with just how huge they are. But anyways, this video obviously is not about the whole defensive line. It's just about Mike Daniels, and Daniels can still play. Maybe he isn't worth his contract anymore, but this guy still clearly has some talent, and here, I'll start things off with this play. He's gonna be going up one-on-one -on -one against that left guard right there, and it's gonna be run to the right side of the screen. So, you know, in theory, he shouldn't really be able to get into this play too much. Basically, what I want to take a look at is look at what Daniels is gonna do right when this play is snapped. Essentially, he's gonna get his left arm and put it to the right side of that left guard's body. He's just going to try to push him that way, and with his strength, he is able to push that guard over there and gets his right arm over the guard. I mean, look at that right there. That's just perfect. Because if you're a guard, what can you do at this point? You're off balance, and he is going to get that arm over you. So unless you want to trip him up, which would obviously be a penalty, you kind of just have to let him go by you. And so that is what's going to happen. Daniels won his matchup. So again, that already good play by Daniels, showing that he has the strength to get around the guard. However, this play is far from over. Jordan Howard could clearly just run up to the right side of the screen still and just outrun Daniels. Daniels has the strength to get past that guard, but does he have the speed to get over to Jordan Howard and make a tackle? And that answer is also going to be a yes. He's able to reach out and make that tackle. Just a great all-around play by Daniels, and that shows right there, okay, this guy definitely still has talent. He is not totally washed up by any means. I do have to wonder if the fact that he got hurt last year maybe factored into it, but as a whole, I think this guy is a very talented player. I think it's possible maybe a reason he did get cut was just his injury history. He did get hurt last year, but either way, I love this pickup from Detroit. I think it's really fascinating because, well, yes, he kind of does just play four technique most frequently. He can also play in either technique, really. This guy balances around. He'll play to four. He'll play to three. He'll play to nose. He'll play to seven. I mean, this guy really does it all. And his versatility really should help Detroit, who already has a very versatile defensive front. One thing that I really think Daniels will help bring to the table is just his veteran awareness, his veteran leadership, and his veteran awareness. He gets guy knows what's going on in pretty much every single play. Like on this one, he's actually not going to be rushing the passer here. He's going to be dropping back into coverage, but the first thing he wants to do is start off as though he's going to be rushing the passer, so that way he can kind of draw the center and left guard sort of in to try to maybe even double team him, and this can give you as many one-on-one -on -one matchups as possible while still not actually being the one who's rushing Trubisky. And so as you see, at this point, he did a very good job. Both that center and left guard have moved over to try to make sure they're aware of Daniels and don't let him just run by them. And at least for the time being, there will be three one-on-one -on -one matchups for Green Bay. And so, you know, the matchups are going to do okay, and Mitchell Trubisky is going to decide, hey, I think I'll run the ball. That's something that he seems to decide a lot, and for a good reason. He's a great runner. And so as you see, him and Daniels are kind of adjacent right now. Looks like Trubisky has maybe one slight step over to the left side of the screen to Daniels, but it's pretty similar. So now it's going to be, can Trubisky just run completely by Daniels, and the answer is actually going to be no. I mean, granted, Trubisky still is clearly faster than Daniels, but Daniels was able to keep pace enough to force Trubisky to have to slide so he could avoid a hit. So again, good awareness of realizing right off the bat, oh, Trubisky's going to be running in this direction, so I should also run in that direction. But then also, hey, he has the speed as an interior lineman to get over and sort of get in the way. This guy's probably not going to be outrunning Tyreek Hill anytime soon, but you know, he can do his part. And one other thing you have to talk about with Daniels when you are talking about him is his hands. This guy has just incredible hands. Like as of right here, okay, so he's going up against the right guard, but notice what he's going to do once this contact is initiated. Basically right here, here's where I want to stop it, largely because of his right arm. Look at how he's just putting his right arm right into where that shoulder pad is. So now he can basically do whatever he wants. And also keep in mind, this is a running play, not a passing play, so he's not trying to get past the guard, he's trying to basically not allow the guard to move him. With that right arm sticking out like that, if you're a guard, you have to get that right arm away. You have to knock his right arm away, because if you don't, then he can easily just push you back, and that would just be bad news. So that is what that guard's going to do, but because he knocks his hand away, this now means that Daniels can kind of just stay where he's at and doesn't get pushed in that moment. 
So now, yes, good news for the guard, you have better hand placement. However, the bad news is Daniels is still right in the way, and there's really no room for the running back to try to run through and try to pick up some yards. That's all it takes sometimes. It's just one good hand placement by one player, and then that turns what could have been a, you know, who knows, a first down run into a run for not much at all. I mean, that's just doing your job right there. That's all that is. And then, of course, just because he is so strong, having great hands can also do other things for you, like on this play. That's where he is on the screen, and once again, this is going to be a running play, and so look at how that guard is basically going to run straight up into him like that. For Daniels, this is actually perfect. Daniels loves plays like this, and a large part of it is because he can get his left arm and kind of just grab that guard's right shoulder pad. So again, good hands right there, but also because of his strength, he's able to just push him back with that, as you see right now. If you're a guard, what can you do here, really? Basically nothing, because your right arm is now so much further back that Daniels will easily be able to lunge to his left and make the tackle, and that's exactly what he does. Those are the kind of things that Daniels can do, and I should also make sure that I'm being clear here in the fact that these are all plays from last year. It's not like I'm digging into the archive to try to find some plays back when he was great. He's still great, I think. It's definitely kind of weird, right? Because he was due to get 8.1 million dollars this season, but they couldn't trade him. But then the Lions went out and offered him 9.1 million dollars. So I'm just a little confused as to why they couldn't at least get something back from Mike Daniels. But again, for the Lions, hey, free good player. They'll take it for sure. It looks like he also had some money due in bonuses, but it wouldn't have been that much more than what Detroit is already giving them. So they couldn't get at least a seventh round pick. It just strikes me as odd. But again, I won't keep harping on that. We all get it at this point. But take a look at this play. I want to show that he's not just necessarily a guy who can stop the run he is a guy who can sometimes apply pressure to a quarterback no one's going to confuse him for Aaron Donald but he it is something he can do like as of right here he's going to be going up against the right guard and notice what's going to happen once this ball is snapped and so as of right now you know nothing really too fancy going on but look at Daniels's punch on this play look at how he's able to knock that guard to the side and then get over to Tom Brady I mean again there's not a ton to break down there more so but it was just a tremendous play by him his hands and strength are just something else. I mean, this guy is just ridiculous. Again, can he do that for 500 snaps in a season? Well, I don't know. But could he do it for a 300? Well, yeah, I'd say so. He doesn't have to be out there for a tremendous amount of snaps. Put him in as a rotational player. You have talent already, so just use him for depth. It might be a lot of money to pay a depth guy, but you know, hey, if it's a depth guy that can also come in and make some big plays and you have the money, why not spend it? One more thing I love about Daniels is this guy's hustle. This guy has a motor that just doesn't quit. Like on this play, it's actually bad news for Daniels because the way it's supposed to work is just the right tackle moves out and blocks Daniels and it's pretty simple. And also, as I said, Daniels will play several different techniques. Right now, he's in the seven technique. Well, Daniels' job here actually is to move over to the right side of the screen. He's going to try to disrupt things from that area. So he's actually going to be pulling over here. But that's not going to work out too well since it is going to be a run to the left side of the screen. So he's basically going to take himself out of the play, essentially. I mean, as you see right now, this now means that tight end has great leverage to push him out of the way. I mean, there's nothing you can do if you're Daniels here. And he does get pushed out of the way. And not just that, but there's another Lions offensive lineman who's also in the way who can help block Daniels. So Daniels is just in a terrible situation and this play should be over. However, there is a little bit of good news for Daniels as well. And that good news is going to be the fact that there's a lot of chaos going on the left side of the screen. And so the halfback isn't really able to get through a hole in any way. So he's going to cut back to the inside. But even though he does that, Daniels, of course, is still getting blocked by two Lions at this point. But notice how he's able to fight and get off of those blocks and then make a tackle, despite the fact that he had two lions basically right on him. That's just hustle more than anything. You know, hustle is something you can't teach. A guy who is going to absolutely give his all on every single play, that's just something you love to see, and that's what Daniels does on every single play. He's just one of those guys where there's nothing you can say that's bad about him. I mean, he's versatile, he's strong, he has great hands, he's fast, he has great hustle. Even off the field, apparently he's a great guy and gives a lot of money to charity. So, I mean, really, why wouldn't you want Mike Daniels, I think? Like, this plays another example of him just having great hustle and a great motor, where that's where he is on a screen, and he's actually going to get double teamed here. So the Detroit Lions center is going to pull over to make sure he's blocking him like that, but also the left tackle will move over to block him, because of course it is kind of a tough block for a center to make one-on-one, -on -one, so if you can bring the tackle over, this can now be a good situation. Plus, it frees up the left guard to move over in any direction that you want. So as a whole, this is actually something you'll see pretty frequently, and it is a pretty good play. And because it is going to be a run to the right side of the screen, I mean, Daniel should be taken out of the play, and as of right now, what can he do here? You have two lions on you, so game over. But one thing you're going to see him do is basically, like he's, you know, a monster ripping open elevator doors. He's going to just try to pull them apart. And because the Lions are kind of saying, hey, we took him out of the play, so we already won, they kind of, I wouldn't say they gave up on the play, but they kind of were only giving 90% instead of 100%. 
and Daniels was able to run over and still have an impact on that play despite the fact that he was getting double teamed. I won't sit here and say he was the reason that play was won. Of course, it was won with the rest of the Packers defensive line, but he certainly did his role. That's what makes defensive lines great too. It's not just people making great plays consistently. It's everyone making a good play consistently. I'd take five, seven out of 10 defensive linemen over one 10 out of 10 and the rest five out of five defensive linemen any day of the week. And good thing for the Lions, they have a lot of like 8 out of 10 or higher guys, so you know, they're definitely looking like they're going to be in pretty good shape. One more play I wanted to show, and this play is actually interesting, because it's actually going to be the left tackle who's going to go over to try to block Daniels. And so of course, to do this, you're going to have to take a step to the left side of the screen very quickly, and Daniels knows that. So once he does, look at what Daniels is doing here. He's basically twisting his body, and he's going to try to throw that tackle to the left side of the screen, and it's going to work. He does get him over to the left side of the screen, and now he's in great position to be trying to make a tackle. I mean, if you see him, he's clearly staring down the halfback, and he absolutely has a chance to make this tackle, but there's one problem, and it's going to be the fullback right over there. However, Daniels is strong enough that he realizes all he has to do is take a step to the right side of the screen, and the fullback won't be able to push him anymore, so that's what he does, and he is able to actually make this tackle as well. That's a highlight real level play if I've ever seen one. I mean, just a tremendous play right there by Daniels. There's no doubt about it, he's a tremendous talent. I mean, just what he does on the football field is just so remarkable. He's such a smart player and also just such a physically gifted player. He's kind of that perfect combination of has great work ethic, is really smart, but also is just physically gifted. I think at the very least, he could just be another veteran presence to bring to that Detroit Lions team. And plus, I'm sure Detroit Lions fans will like it because it'll annoy Packers fans and they love when that happens. So yeah, that's my thoughts on Mike Daniels going to the Lions. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And as always, thanks for watching.